The Etegwini Metro Municipality's most anticipated inaugural council gets underway today. And a mayor and as well as a deputy mayor are expected to be elected. The council meeting was abruptly called off on Monday following a number of disruptions and a power outage. My colleagues Oli Ngambi and Karinda Jagmahan are in Durban following the developments there on the ground. Let's start with you, uh, Oli. Uh, talk to us about the state of affairs. I know a, a lot of candidates are anticipating uh, the results of what will happen come 2 p.m. today. But at least uh, the speaker, that is done and dusted. Well, uh, you're quite right, Tommy. Very good afternoon to you, by the way. And uh, we're coming to you live from the Durban International Convention Center. It's a completely different venue to what the Monday meeting or where the Monday meeting uh, was held, which was uh, at uh, a marquee within the Moses Mabida Stadium. And you will know that um, that was a botched meeting and there is no... Um, way that we can, I think, sanitize that. It was a chaotic meeting and uh, it was badly handled. And so one of the questions, uh, Tommy, that is going to be central here is if this meeting has now been moved to the Durban International Convention Center, what measures are in place to make sure that there is a smooth meeting that produces a democratic result at the end of it? And uh, the one person to answer that very question is the one that uh, you have spoken about, which is uh, the speaker, the newly elected speaker of uh, the Durban City Council, that's Mr. Tabane Nyawose. And he actually joins me right now, Tami, to speak about that. Speaker, uh, thank you very much for your time. Let's start with um, why this meeting is being held so late in the day, two o'clock in the afternoon. Some people may see that as suspicious. Well, thank you very much. There, there are two reasons why the meeting has been moved and is held late in the afternoon. The, the venue that we used uh, on Monday, it was flooded on Monday evening after the heavy rains. Then when I went there with my team for inspection, I found that the venue was not conducive to have the meeting. Now I had to rearrange an alternative venue because I made a commitment in the council on Monday to convene this meeting today at 10. But I could not make it to do a 10 because of logistics. I hired this venue very late. Then I see requested that no, they can only accommodate me at 2. And then I called the meeting of all parties and informed them they were all here with that. Hence, we are here at 2. So for security reasons, though, Speaker, do you anticipate that this meeting will end whilst the sun is still up? Because if Monday's proceedings are anything to go by, there could be a security risk. How safe is this venue? Uh, I don't anticipate any security risk, but I've made everything possible with my team to make sure that this venue is secured. No one will come closer to this venue who's not supposed to be here. I know that there are fears because of what happened on Monday, of which uh, I, I have apologized to all political parties yesterday about that incident. And then I made a commitment to prevent such incident not to happen again. This vein, I can assure you, nothing will happen. No one will, will, will punch in here. No one will disrupt. So here's another critical question. Safety matters aside, let's talk about the potential filibustering that might happen here. Point of order, Chair, for no apparent reason. How do you handle that, Speaker, in such a way that you are not accused as favoring one party? By the way, you are an ANC member. Some may say that the ANC members seem to be allowed a lot more points of orders than others. How do you handle this meeting, or how do you plan to handle that? Yeah, let's start by, 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 by confirming that in terms of the rules of order that guide me in handling meetings, Councillors are allowed to raise point of orders, and I have to give them an opportunity to speak. But I need to listen to the point of order and make a ruling. But what happened that time, there were many point of orders that were raised by councillors, and I had no reason not to afford them an opportunity to speak. But 
they are allowed, but they are not allowed to be destructive. In my meeting with them yesterday, we were preparing for this meeting to be smooth. I raised the matter with them strong to say, yes, we have a right to raise point of orders, but please be mindful of time and also don't be distracted. Yeah. The council meeting should make, we must maintain its decorum. Yeah. I received that commitment from political parties, and I'm satisfied that the meeting will run smooth. All right. Final question, Speaker. As you know, a time is of the essence here. Let me get to party political matters now. Let's remove your hat as party political, as, as, as the speaker of the council. And let me speak to you as an ANC member. You were top of the list, number one, in the three candidates or among the three candidates that were submitted for mayor in the city of Eteguini. How is it that you became a speaker and not the mayor? In terms of the ANC guidelines, they were issued earlier before start processes. It was a thing that... Being number one in the list does not mean that you automatically qualify for any position. ANC branches understood that. I understood that as well. Then there was a process of submitting your CV, then going to an interview, of which I went to an interview. Who, who, was, who interviewed you, by the way? Any of the people who were involved in state capture? <laughs> no, no. The officials of the ANC. That's what I went to say. I went to an interview. I believe that the ANC was trying to get the best mayor among its caters. And I believe we have the best mayor through that ANC process, Combat Cowan, of which I support him. And I'm happy for him that the ANC ended up appointing him to be our candidate. All right. Speaker, I'm out of time, but I've got to put the question to you. What time do you anticipate that this meeting will end and will end with a legitimate result? In terms of uh, uh, items in my agenda, because I have to, the first item will be the nomination of the speaker and the voting process. The nomination of the, no, no, I'm sorry, the nomination of the mayor and the voting process, then the deputy mayor and the chief whip. That process then it will be the sorting of three of them, then the chain, then we close. For me, that process will take us two to three hours. I, I don't expect this meeting to run more than three hours. All right. Thank you very much, Tabani Nyaose, the newly elected speaker Thank of you, the you. Durban City Council. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. I keep saying Durban, it's Etewini, that's the name of the municipality, uh, Tami. But uh, before I throw back to you, my colleague, Karinda Jagmohan, is outside the venue just to demonstrate to you the kind of security that is here. And you've heard the speaker saying that he does not expect anyone who is not supposed to be here to basically breach the security here. Karinda, what are you seeing from your side? That is indeed correct, a strong security presence. In fact, there's a Metro Police and SAPS ring around the Durban ICC armored vehicles as well. And what you're seeing right now is after the action essays, Makosi Koza signing into the venue. So I'm actually gonna try and door stop her quickly uh, before she continues there. Let's actually try and uh, go past her. She's a bit busy with accreditation, but as we go through and show you, this is where the uh, political representatives, those who have accreditation must come through, and it's the first of two screenings that one has to go through. Of course, up this escalator, you've got to check all of your equipment as well. Basically, the police, the SAPS Metro Police, as well as security here at the Durban ICC, trying to ensure that no persons that are not allowed to be here should be here. We remember that at the Monday council meeting, a number of protesters wearing ANC regalia made their way into that uh, makeshift marquee in the midst of the Moses Mobita Stadium. They passed barricades and then disrupted the meeting. No arrests have been made following what happened there. And that is why we have the ring of security around us here. Now, like I mentioned, political party representatives slowly streaming in. We're seeing more EFF representatives as well, among others. But the action essay as well here. And for a newly formed party, they've really made gains across the country. And here in Itikwini, their vote will also make huge determinations of what will happen. We've heard uh, just recently from the EFF that they said uh, earlier in one of our crossings that they will try and vote out the ANC from power. And that would be the first time, if that should happen, we would see 
something of that nature. So more political party representatives streaming in as I'm now just waiting for uh, the Action SA uh, a, a member here in Itikwini to come through, Makosi Koza. Uh, there we go. Let's try and stop her there. Sorry. She is, of course, uh, has been standing as a mayoral candidate, and we're going to try while she's signing in to speak to her. Ramkozai, we are live on Newsroom Africa. I know you're busy signing in. Can my goodness, I cannot comment right now because I'm going to have a focus with my, my team. Okay, Action SA not willing to comment there. She's busy. But uh, Oli, as I actually walk through here, this is, of course, one of the next uh, points where we're going to come up. Like I said, two areas where you have to stop and go through for accreditation. Security is extremely tight following what happened at that Monday meeting uh, when we saw the disruptions and of course there was a power outage that they said uh, was the reason why the meeting had to be called off but of course we know there had been political tensions prior to that. So Oli, I believe that you also have more guests to speak to. Back to you. Not as yet, Corinda, but he certainly will have and will be going back to uh, Guazulu Natal, where the Etiguini Council is due to sit come 2 p.m. But as you could see there with Makosi Koza, a lot of uh, caucuses meeting there ahead of the actual uh, voting and the election of the speaker, which is scheduled to take place today. But as you can see, security measures being put in place to ensure that what was experienced on Monday with ANC members storming the Moses Mabida Stadium does not happen at the Durban ICC. We'll keep you abreast of developments there.